I dodged, weaved, and bobbed my way through the assembled crowd, flashing my identity card at the guards to let me in. I hastily gabbled a slur of sorts, taking everyone by complete shock. I entered the council's chambers and, still carrying my package, moved onto the speaker's podium in the room and shoved the current speaker aside. My rudeness was not appreciated as I received a litany of angry swearing, heavy cursing, and even a few hastily slung and quickly apologized for racial slurs from the angrily assembled crowd. I put my package down next to me on the floor, along with a clearly human-made folding table, and screamed angrily into the microphone, Shut up, you old bracters! The room suddenly went deathly silent, unnaturally so. I gathered my thoughts and wished I hadn't done that, but carried on my work. I set up the folding table and put the package on top of it. I had all the answers, all of them. Why and how were in this box and I couldn't keep myself together? I was coming undone. But this, this was too important. Ambassador Orino, you better have a damn good explanation for this, the council chamberlain Master Braxus bellowed. Shut up and observe. All will be answered. Now shh. I yelled back as I pulled a selection of dinner plates and a rather well-known messy sauce from the box. My rudeness received a gasp of horror from the assembled crowd. By this point, my behaviour was known through the whole station, and a few people as well as guardsmen had filtered through and were watching in earnest. I hauled out of the box a set of dinnerware. Three large plates, a frying pan and a few utensils, plus a drinking glass. I put them on the table and popped open the bottle of one of the tastiest but messiest saucy condiments humanity makes. This, I said, slapping the table, is made by humans. It is the reason behind their prowess. Before I begin my demonstration, allow me to explain. I suddenly had the entire delegation's attention in both confusion and curiosity. Even the ambassador who I rudely shoved aside onto the floor was now slightly more inclined to listen instead of trying to bite my antennae off. There is a plague that we all must face, regardless of species. It wastes precious water and toxifies the water we use to accomplish it, more so. I dare say its biggest aspect is its unmitigated waste of damn time. Humanity has solved this quandary. I bellowed loudly and proudly. I grabbed the tasty sauce bottle, popping open the cap. Immediately I knew the smell had caused a few of my fellow ambassadors to start sniffing in hunger. I rudely sprayed the sauce over each plate, the pan, and around the glass. I then wiped my hands clean with a cloth. I stepped back and began a short lecture. In every human life, usually around the human age of around 18 or so, each human is basically required to leave their family units and start a life alone either in seeking further education or in finding employment, I said, looking around to make sure I had everyone's attention. Once certain I had that attention, I continued, talking a proud, almost smug walk around the table. All humans have this hurdle to overcome, just like us. Just like us, all humans must accomplish this most detestable of tasks or risk infection or squalor, but... A great milestone in this life journey is the acquisition of these items, I said, pointing to the cookware. I let my words sink in for a short moment. It was at this moment I noticed the Skataran ambassador's face twist into one of shock and surprise. Wait, is she saying what I think she's saying? Behold, I proclaimed loudly, as if I was a mage in an ancient village, showing the peasantry a trick. I pressed a series of oddly coloured buttons on each of the items. Imperceptible, small buttons placed where you'd never place your hands accidentally. On pushing them, I heard a light, short bing like a tiny bell being rung, and in front of the entire council the stains of sticky, tasty sauce vanished from the items. Within seconds, a half an hour's worth of work was done as the globs of thick brown concoction slowly disappeared. I pulled out a biometric spectrometer, a small but powerful portable version, and tested each surface, not only clean, but sterile. 
A light bell-sounding ping told me that the items were done. Brethren of the Galactic Council, I bring to you the secret to humanity's success, the secret as to why they are so efficient at completing research tasks. The secret as to why their warship fleets outnumber ours three to one. The secret to how they have ten times the worlds we do, despite settling barely habitable barren rocks. But more so, they also have this, I yelled proudly. I grabbed the bottle of sauce, aimed it at my very elegant-looking dress, and blasted myself with it, emptying its contents. Much to the chagrin of the Rakandi, who were lamenting the loss of the sauce, but also the Yakanai, who were annoyed at the sight of a very fine garment being ruined. I stood calm and watched with glee at the awe on the Council's faces as the stain I had on my dress quickly vanished. Council! The secret to humanity's success is right here. I'm wearing it, and earlier today I ate lunch on it. Self-cleaning cookware and self-cleaning clothing. I stood there in full smug mode for a good while as the council and assembled crowd stared at me in disbelief. Finally, after a solid twenty minutes of silence, someone finally got their brain functions back. How? One ambassador, who I still don't know, finally spoke. Their clothes? Simple. Mechanite nanofibers and nanopolymers. Their clothing, almost everything from baby clothing to military uniforms to hazmat suits, is lined with or made entirely out of the stuff. Mechanites are a significantly cheaper and less complex form of nanites, like the ones we usually use for ship armor repairs. The exact same kind of system is used for the cookware, only these ones are resistant to high heat or toxic substances, which is why these are a milestone for humans. These things are... Expensive, I responded calmly, still unable to wipe the smile off my face. How expensive exactly? one counsellor asked. Well... From what I have been told, if a human saves his income for about six months by living very frugally, he or she can roughly afford to buy a full set of cookware, dinnerware and such for about three months' wages, equivalent to around 7,000 council dactarians, I replied calmly. Damn, that's steep. Seriously? 7,000, one councillor said. Oh, the humans all consider it more than worth it. It pays for itself within the first few weeks. No money spent on water usage, cleaning, sterilization agents and soap, and more time spent on doing normal activities rather than washing dishes and cleaning clothes. This, this explains so much about them. They simply have more time and resources doing more important things, I said in kind. Another ten minutes of silence followed. Finally, the Lord Chamberlain spoke up. Are these simply on the open market. I know where you are going with this, and I already prepared for it. I have this. I pressed a button on my wearable data pad, and every delegate's console beeped. It was a letter written by humanity, along with the technical schematics, blueprints, and manufacturing specs of the self-cleaning items, including the clothing fibers. Hello, Galactic Council. Sorry we can't deliver this to you in person, but we are dealing with a crisis at the moment and can't attend. We are quite surprised you didn't already have the self-cleaning tech, to be honest. Kind of expected you lot to have this stuff yonks ago. But in the interests of friendship, here you go. Making these is pretty much public knowledge anyway, and we'll be happy to cut you a deal to give you a few sets to start you up on the market. Just let us know if you need anything else. But like we said... We can't be of much help right now, unless it's an emergency. We're kinder in crisis mode. Anyway, see you at the next meeting. Best regards, the Terran Confederation. Well, um, I... Just as surprised as they were, I asked them if I could bargain with them for access to this tech. The guy I worked with looked at me like I'd just beaten a ghost or something, and wondered why we didn't already have the tech. He just outright gave me a set of blueprints and a sample set for us to use. All I had to do was ask nicely, and here we are, I replied with a smile. Seriously? J just like that? One counselor asked. Yes. 
Apparently simply asking humans politely gets you a lot of places, if they are in the mood, of course, no state secrets or military tech or stuff like that. No amount of politeness will get you there. But small stuff like this, apparently, all you have to do is ask politely and then be friendly with them later. Such strange creatures, I said calmly. The rest of the council nodded in agreement. They were indeed strange. Wait, hold on, one councillor said and re-read the letter. They said they are in crisis mode. What's going on? This suddenly alerted the whole room. A sudden air of tension permeated everything. Oh. Well, I did raise that concern, but the human admirals and ambassadors I spoke with said not to worry about it. They aren't in danger or anything, they're just doing a project that's taking up way too much of their time. I was told not to worry, so I'm not, I said in a most calm manner. Oh, well, that's good. What are they up to? The Chamberlain asked. Oh, I don't know, my brain was fuzzy from coffee and cake. Something about building a Dyson sphere and using its energy reserves to harvest the core of an orbiting neutron star. Or something, I said. You fucking what?